Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my Cascading Style Sheets tutorial. Today, I'm going to completely cover layout and positioning with Cascading Style Sheets and XHTML. If you haven't seen the previous HTML, XHTML, and Cascading Style Sheets tutorial, definitely watch those first. First, whenever it comes to positioning in HTML with Cascading Style Sheets, it's very important to enclose all of your code into a series of block elements. If you don't remember from the previous tutorial, here are all of the block elements that are available to you inside of HTML. You have block quotes, divs, definition lists, forms, header tags, horizontal rules, ordered lists, paragraphs, tables, unordered lists, and list items. Those are your block elements in HTML. And you want to always enclose everything in block elements. And what are block elements? They force a line break after you define them. Quite simple. If you'd like to actually read this tutorial instead of watching it, there's a link in the underbar to all of the code that I use here. So you can see it here on the right side of the screen, just in case you'd like to read it or you want access to the code. All right, right into this guy. A lot of people said this is a hefty amount of information to cover in one tutorial. I'm going to do my best to keep this under 15 minutes and keep it 100% understandable. We have here on the left side of the screen just the basics HTML. There's nothing too fancy here. You got your style tags, body tags, and that is pretty much it. I'm going to show you how to make sidebar bars, headers, footers, all that stuff, all here in one tutorial. Okay, let's get to it. Stop talking. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to define a class, and I'm going to call it brain2, mainly because I'm going to stick a brain inside of a div, and I'm going to give it a border width of two pixels and a border style of dotted. I'm trying to mix this up and give you some new things you may not have seen before or may not remember. Border color, and this is just hexadecimal code. If you want hexadecimal code for pretty much any color you could ever imagine, just type in wiki space web colors or anything like that in Google and you should be able to get it. Background color, and I'm going to give it a width of 200 pixels. Text align center and make all the text inside of what's going to be a div centered and follow all those rules right there i'm going to show you what this looks like without the styling and then i'm going to show you what it looks like with the styling paragraph tag and i'm going to stick same graphic i've been using in the other tutorials here and i'm going to skip over things like alternative text just to save time otherwise i'd be here forever and then close the div Right like that. Reload it. And you can see right there, there's the, the div and there's what a brain and there's a little graphic and so forth and so on. Well, you can remember I did not style this guys, but I'm going to style them right now. How do I do that? Jump in here this time because I didn't use the period. I have to use ID previously whenever I put it, a period in here. You have to call a class, but since I put a hash symbol in here just to show you different ways of accessing this information, I have to call ID instead. And if I save that, you can see now I applied styling. I applied all the styling to this div, I centered it, changed the background, changed the border, changed countless numbers of different things just that easily. Another great thing about div elements is that you can edit the tags inside of it also with ease. Like for example, let's say you want to change the color of just the H3 tag inside of the brain2 div. Well, you would just come in here, type the following, brain2, change the styling on the h3 tag, and I want to change the color to purple, right like that. And you can see the color change to purple instead of the black that I had in there before. And also, you can do the same sort of thing with spans, which are kind of like divs, except they're inline elements, like irritate, so let's say I want to choose an irritating color for a span. Well, then I would just come down here after this div and type in span. Class now, remember, because I put the period in there instead of the hash symbol. Irritate. And if I roll over here, you can see that it showed up right here in the ugly fuchsia color. So you can do the same sort of things with spans that you do with divs. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to get this div to align right and it is amazingly easy. Come in here, delete this out, and inside of style, I'm gonna create some styling for some basic lipsum code. And here I'm just going to say border color and just make that white, real nice and simple. And then if I want this guy to float to the right side of the screen, that's what I'm talking about when I say float right, I just type in float and guess what? The word right, not too hard. And on top of that, I'm gonna give it a margin to the left of where it's gonna be. So if it's over on the right, a margin to the left is what I'm creating right here of 50 pixels. So this will keep it separate from the lipsum code that I'm gonna be putting in here. And this div right here can stay the way that it is. And I pre-created this lipsum div right here 
just so I didn't have to type all this nonsense out. It's just a lot of information. You're going to see in a minute, see how long it is. And that's all you do. And if I file save that, come over here. You can see that the lipsum information is right here. And the little box div that we created is aligned right. And you can bet you that there's 50 pixels between these two guys. All right, so that's how you would perform that. Now let's say I want to make a div with a header, footer, as well as content and a sidebar. Boy, that sounds like a lot of work. Actually, it's not. I'm just going to jump up here again. And in the style area, I'm going to define that I want my body background color and here's shorthand code for white and then I'm going to define my header hopefully you know what I mean by header if you don't you're going to know in a second background color just to change it up a little bit color meaning color of text and we're going to make that white padding 20 pixels now I'm going to come in here and create the footer again hope you know what that means otherwise you'll see background color and I could have copied what was up above but it didn't but this time I'm going to be smarter. I'm going to copy this and have the footer and the header be the same color. Now, this isn't going to be the most beautiful thing imaginable, but that's not the point of it. The point is to make it work. Now I'm going to come in here and make a couple changes to this lipsum code, meaning that I'm going to take this out of here, background color, and I'm also going to define margin right, creating a margin to the right of this. That's all this is. 240 pixels. And this right here is the main reason that the content is going to be separated from the sidebar that I create. And I don't have to make any changes here. Say I have float right, so I want this to be on the right side. Margin left, I'm going to change this to 20 pixels. And I'm also going to make a margin top, which is going to separate or create a margin between this and the header. And just to keep everything consistent, I'm going to make that 20 pixels as well. And then down here, I don't really need to change that many things. I do need to put a div in that's going to represent the header. Header. Everything else can be exactly the same, except I'm going to have to put in another section. And guess what that's going to represent? The footer. And footer. Once you get good at cascading style sheets, you literally can do almost anything just without even thinking about it. And if I file save that, you can see I created a title bar, I created a content area, I created a sidebar, and I created a footer that fast. Now I'm going to create for you a two-column sidebar layout. You're going to see just how simple this is. I mean, there's like almost nothing I'm going to need to change. Okay, so I got everything set up here. This is why I crack up when people are so amazed whenever a website will change sidebar locations and so forth on the fly. Well, there's really nothing to it. I'm just going to have to come in here to the lipsum area, and I'm going to have to create a margin to the right of 450 pixels. Remember, I'm making a two-column sidebar. So I want to allow for two of these sidebar items here. That's what I'm doing with this guy. All right, so I changed that. Now I'm going to create the other sidebar item. And just to keep this simple, I'm going to call this brain three. I'm going to keep this at two pixels, keep this dotted, keep this color exactly the same, keep background color the same, keep the width to 200 pixels, float it right, margin to the left. This is actually going to change to 420. This is still going to say 20 pixels right there. And there's still going to be a 20 pixel margin top. Well, since I only changed styling up there, there's not really much I need to change down here. What do I need to do? I need to create another div. That's it. Simple. Div, boom, ID is equal to, guess what? It's going to be brain three. Right like that. And what are we going to have in here? Eh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm actually just going to steal this information. But you can put anything you want in here. And that's all I need to change right there. And if I jump over here, boom, now i got three of them in there. And then if I want to come in here and adjust this margin here on the side so that this doesn't have quite as much control over it, I can, of course, come in here. This is in brain three again. And let's just change that to 20 and reload it. And you can see that everything lines up. And then I got the lipsum information here. And then I have the two sidebar items. But you say, how hard would it be to move this sidebar item over here and have this be centered? Actually, would take almost no time at all. Just need to change a couple things. I need to come in here to the lipsum area. And I'm going to have to actually create a margin on the right. And I'm going to make this 250 pixels. And I also need to make, what, a margin on the left. And I'm going to leave that at 250 pixels. Then, if I want one of these sidebar items to be on the left, one to be on the right, well, I have to come in here in brain 2, and I'm going to make this margin left, change that to 10 pixels, leave everything else precisely the same, come down to brain 3, and I'm going to change my float from right to left. And then I'm going to change this to 10 pixels. I'm going to leave that the same. Actually, I'm going to leave everything the same. I'll save it, reload, boom. 
I just moved everything over. And just to keep this simple, so you're not like, what? What's he doing? See? Float right. That's this guy. Float left. That's this guy. That is it. That is all that is to defining and moving these divs around. Now you also have something called uh, setting up a locked layout. And to create a locked layout, all you basically have to do is surround all of your divs with an enclosing div with a fixed width. It's really simple. What we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to create something that I'm going to call master. And this is going to surround everything. And I'm going to give it a fixed width of 1,000 pixels. Padding top of 10 pixels just to keep that nice and neat. Padding bottom 10 pixels again. Background color white. Normally this is always going to be the same color as the background for your body. You can also set your margins to auto. And this will center the whole entire web page and create left and right margins so that they are equal. And I'm going to do the same thing for margin right. Then what we got to do is just come down into the main HTML in the body section. And we're going to create a div. And we're going to give it the ID equal to master. And then what do we got to do? We got to close off that div. That's it. And if we file save that, you can see that I created a fixed width. This guy is going to stay the same no matter what. And that's how you create a fixed layout inside of HTML using cascading style sheets. And you can also tell the browser exactly where you want to place your divs down to the pixel using what is called absolute positioning. I just have to warn you, and this is why I'm not going to get into this a whole lot, against using this because it's very easy to break the structure of the web page if you don't precisely calculate the exact placement of your divs. And most of the problems that I've come across in regards to cascading style sheets have to do with absolute positioning. And basically to understand how absolute positioning works, you need to think of your divs as playing cards. And technically, you can stack all of your divs on top of each other with absolute positioning. And actually, there is a property that specifies which div is above all of the others, and this is called the Z-index. And I'm not going to get a lot into absolute positioning because I think most things are liquid like this with a surrounding div that keeps everything in order. But just so you know, like if I wanted to create a sidebar using absolute positioning what I would do is define position absolute and then I would say and this would work I mean you can totally type this in and it will work I need to tell it absolutely where to be so I want it to be hundred pixels from the top and then I want it to be zero pixels from the right side of the current browser I want it to have a total width of 200 pixels and a Z index remember here's the property I just told you about that's new and the higher the number is, the more on top of the stack this guy's going to be. So if the z-index 99 is the highest z-index, this div that you create is going to be the highest div, meaning it's going to be on top of all the other ones. So that's how you do absolute positioning. It's real simple. Top 100 pixels, of course, put position absolute, and it's going to be pretty much stuck to the right side of the browser. And you can also use what's called relative positioning. And what this does is it positions divs based off of a position that is relative to another div, for example. And you could, for example, create like an image that was going to be inside of this sidebar and instead come in here and create a relative position, meaning that it's going to be 100 pixels from the top of whatever div it's inside of. And if we come in here, normally with relative positioning, you work with top and left. So let's say 100 pixels. Okay, so that's how relative positioning works. It's pretty much like absolute positioning in which you're defining relative to the entire browser window. With relative positioning, you're defining relative to a div that this image, for example, would lie inside of. So hopefully that's understandable. If it's not, the reason why I'm not covering it is it's a disaster, especially for beginner people, to try and figure out how to do relative and absolute positioning. And the other positionings, you can do almost anything, so why go into it extremely deep? But I am going to show you how to do a fixed position, like a pop-up, like an irritating thing, inside of Cascading Style Sheets here. So it's going to be on top of all these other things. So what I need to do is to jump up into my styling area, and I'm going to call it pop-up. And I'm going to copy all this stuff from here, because this is all going to be the same. Okay, so we got all that in there. And then this is the part that's different. Position is going to be fixed, meaning that it's going to go exactly where I tell it to go. 100 pixels from the top of the screen and 300 pixels from the left side of the screen. You know, if you ever wondered how they get those pop-up windows to irritate you by popping up there on the screen, this is how they do it. And I'm going to scroll down here. And what do I do? I just got to create a div, div, right like that. 
ID is equal to pop up right like that. Close that off. And again, just to save a little bit of time, I'm actually going to grab this code right here. I'm going to grab all this code. Copy it. Jump this right there. What a brain. And now let's make the pop-up appear. And you can see, there it is. It appeared 100 pixels down from the top and 300 pixels from the left, right there. And I can position it anywhere I want on the screen and do pretty much anything I want with it. So there is pretty much every single way of styling and laying out web pages with cascading style sheets. Between this and the other three tutorials, you know pretty much everything there is to know about cascading style sheets. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.